I might get shadow banned for this, but I gotta speak my truth. I've seen a few posts, including Burna Boy, talking about how Americans, black Americans don't have culture, but y'all come to America and the first thing you do is dress like us, try to talk like us, listen to our music. Got the nerve to talk down on black Americans, calling us slaves, but then y'all copy everything we do. You can look over the last 10 years, pop culture is black culture. We've ran it all from movies, music, TV, fashion, the list goes on. So next time you come on here or any social media platform talking about black Americans don't have no culture, just look at yourself. Just look at who you listen to, you know? Even Afro Beats is a mixture of reggae and hip hop with a little bit of soca, which is just another form of reggae. Like Burner Boy said, all that dressed in Timberlands and baggy jeans. And y'all turn around and get mad when we are claiming American and not African heritage. When a lot of our black American ancestors were actually here in America always and have always been here. And even then, we aren't denying our African heritage that we do have. But the special thing about us is y'all represent one tribe from y'all's place, wherever y'all from, whether it be African, Jamaican, Caribbean. Guess what? The black American is thousands and thousands of tribes in one. Do y'all understand how magical that is? We have the power of several cultures in ours and we still have managed after all we've been through to create our own, our own sound, our own dress, our own everything. So chill with all that, we don't have a culture because we are y'all's culture. Y'all don't even wanna be y'all when they came here, period. Black Americans are just mad at Tyler because they can't get to live vicariously through her. Okay, here we go with another dusty African. No black Americans are not mad because we want to live through Tyler. The problem with Tyler is she is very arrogant, but she wants to capitalize off of black dollars. It's funny how you Africans always pop up on this TikTok running your mouths, but yet foreigners are running your country. Y'all need to run them foreigners about your land and um, try to take it back and, you know, Get a hold of some money, some jobs, get rid of them diseases y'all have run around there because food is scarce, water is scarce, resources is scarce. We know what's going on over there in South Africa and other parts of Africa. Y'all not doing too well. So y'all need to start worrying about what black Americans are doing. Uh, Tyler is going to be Tyler. She thinks that she's better than everybody. And if black Americans were smart, they wouldn't buy her music. They wouldn't buy Afro beats. They wouldn't support none of that mess they got going on over there because y'all have a colonized mindset. In fact, y'all think that y'all better than black Americans. That's the problem. A lot of you Africans, a lot of you foreign black folks, y'all think y'all better than black Americans. Nobody's trying to live through Tyler. If she wants to be colored, let her be colored. Last time I checked, when I look up where the colored people live, um, it's the slums where the rest of the regular black folks live. Only difference between that, they just live in a biracial slum. So they walk around like they better than, and that's it. Y'all still treated like dirt. Y'all still treated like garbage over there in South Africa. So you can keep quiet. Uh, feisty black and I'm out. Next. African Americans get irritated at Myron from Fresh and Fit for the same reason why they get irritated at Tyla who says I'm colored. They don't like challenger continental Africans who come from the continent, go to the West, do well and challenge their monopoly over the black voice in the world. To me, you said y'all are challengers and challenging black Americans, and we don't like that y'all challenging us. Let me ask you a question. Why you won't challenge the white people in your country to take your land back? Like, why is it that y'all always want to challenge us? Like y'all always got beef with us, fighting with us, but you ain't got fighting spirit for the 5% that's that's overtook your fucking country. Like you wanna fight us for our stuff. Like that's crazy. That is not the reason why African Americans don't like Tyla and Myron, okay? Myron was given the opportunity. Be a black American and benefit from black American society to shit on the very society 
that you're fucking benefiting from. Like, and then say we don't like him because of that. Myron is a racist, misogynistic coon. And that's another one that we don't want to play in our face. Like, we're not going to have you playing in our face. Y'all Africans come over here and want to play in our face and undo everything that we've done for the benefit of what? So you can tap dance for white people? Stop. Tyler is catching it. It's because Tyler came to America to be successful. Hold on. If she was that girl, I'm going to say it again. If she was that girl, why she wasn't successful in South Africa? Why did she come here to gain opportunities that black Americans work for, for her to be successful? And then turn her fucking nose up when we say, hold on, baby girl, this is our culture. If you wanted to be colored, stay in South Africa. No, 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 no. You can't come here and then want to tell the people that you're being marketed to that you ain't going to claim being black, but you want black dollars because you could have kept your colored ass in South Africa, where you could have got South African colored dollars. Like, it's the sure audacity that you want us to respect Tyler being colored, right? But you don't want to respect why we don't want her to call herself colored in America. Because if she calls herself colored in America, white folks is just waiting in the background for to be like, hi, they're colored. Look, the coloreds, the coloreds. And they're saying it in the derogatory way for, for jokes and cackles. Like, why is it that y'all won't listen to shit we say? Like, why is it so difficult for you to understand why it is that we give white people zero fucking air to breathe for the nonsense that y'all want to keep perpetuating. Talking about, we won't give you the mic. We heard what Tyler has to say. She's a colored from South Africa that's been benefiting from being biracial. And so because she's benefiting from apartheid, where she wants to be in a colorist society, and you want black people to participate in that shit. Look. We became successful because we stamped out that dumb shit. And we're not fixing to go backwards because she want to play in our face. If you want to play in our face, go be successful in South Africa. The fact that y'all think this, the fact that you made these statements, the fact that you think black people are sitting up here like, oh, hold on, we're intimidated that Africans are coming over here. Okay, but why are you coming here? Why? White people ain't got the door open for you. So why are you coming here? Why? Why are you coming here? Yeah, to benefit from African Americans. Don't forget that. Like the reason why you have the opportunities to make money and be successful here is because of African Americans. Hold on, we're not even African Americans. It's because of the Aboriginal Americans. Like, don't lose your head trying to make it seem like we're scared of y'all because we're not. And I need you to explain something to me. Why is it that you're trying to grab the mic over here? Hold on. Grab the mic in Africa. <laughs> Why are you trying to grab the mic over here? You got all this big talk over here, but you can't talk that shit over there. See, that's your problem. You're trying to come over here and run our shit. No, no, no. We don't need your assistance. We don't need your help. Go home and do that. Like, I'm not the type of person to be like, go back to the country you came from. But we, our, my ancestors established all this shit here for me to benefit and my children to benefit from. If you got all this shit to say, stay home. Like, if you got static with people and talking about, we done heard what you had to say about systemic racism. Guess what, my guy? When you come into America, you're not Sudanese. You're not Ghanaian. You're not Nigerian. Your ass is black. Falling into the African-American category where you fall into systemic racism. That's the reason why we keep talking about it. Y'all want to swipe the shit under a rug because uh, 
apartheid happened 70 years ago. You're still suffering from it. Like the fact that y'all sitting up here thinking, well, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. You're being discriminatory towards your people because they're not mixed with white. Like, that's the reason why black people don't play these games. One thing I want you to know is your skin don't make us kin. To my native black Americans, anytime you talk to anybody in this country, I don't care if they're brown, black, yellow, whatever. If they're not native Siberian Americans or native black Americans, chances are they came here in the 1900s, 1970s or whatever. And they don't qualify to talk about American history because they don't know anything about American history. They came here 400, 500 years or more after your ancestors. So how do they know about American history? Before you engage, always ask them what year their parents came or their families came here. Stop taking these people seriously when they came here 400 years plus after your people. I think it's so funny how no matter where you go in the world, you're going to see the exact same things. Desperately poor native people living on their own resource rich lands with nothing to show for it but churches that they ain't built. My goodness. The greatest trick the European mind ever came up with was convincing us that our native religions were witchcraft and that the only way to heaven is by denouncing the exact same violence and greed that they're about to bring into your life. <laughs> And this is not a knock on religion. I consider myself to be a pretty religious guy. I think it's fun. There are repercussions that come from the trauma of having a religion beat into your ancestor's brain. I think a lot of people are experiencing religious psychosis. It is not normal to be unable to just dislike things. Everything does not have to be a bad spirit. Demonic. Current discourse about fraternities and sororities is a great example of that. You're allowed to just dislike the way somebody walks, talks, acts, looks, behaves. You don't need to use religious justification, but that makes a lot of sense when you think about it from a colonizer's perspective. You cannot exterminate a group of people because you just don't like them, but you can exterminate demons. <laughs> In fact, it's actually your holy duty, your moral obligation to exterminate them. The exact type of thinking that's critical to justifying what happens to the Incans, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Congolese, the Sudanese, right, the Palestinian. I think that's a big part of why you see so much religious attendance is dying nowadays is because a lot of what religion is is evolving into more of a signifiers of a social club where most of the members are just joined by a common aesthetic. And you know what? I hate a think piece since it's turning into a think piece. I'm actually going to cut this one short, but do what makes sense to you. This the one. This is the comment right here. When I tell you the so-called Christians have been the worst, you know what's so crazy? The crazy part is, is that Christians can somehow point out the devil and the enemy when it comes to things going wrong in their lives. That's when everybody got all the discernment in the world. That's when everybody can point out witches and warlocks and point out all the most satanic stuff. When it comes time to play the blame game, in their life and have to blame somebody and we're going to just blame it on the devil that's when everybody got discernment but when it comes to the world and the satanic agendas that is being pushed upon the world and when it comes to how the devil is running rampant in the world i mean he's been running rampant in the world but it's so many people are missing the plot nobody got discernment everybody just purposely put their discernment in the trash can just so they can idolize politicians Everybody just knocked God right off the pedestal to prop up to prop up a politician. Literally, you know it's bad. I seen a video yesterday with this lady, and she said she does not even believe. She is not a believer. She said she will probably burn, but she understands that the assignment that is being pushed upon this world is not right. You know that is bad when, when non-believers say that. But you got Christians on here justifying abortions. Justifying the unaliving of babies. Justifying the mutilization of children. Justifying the fact that this government has lost three over 300,000 children. You have Christians. You can say whatever you want to say out your mouth. But it's all about your, about your heart. Christians. When I tell you, y'all, I jumped off Christian TikTok so fast, baby, I put Peach and he came back on my timeline. I'd rather people that are true to themselves 
than people who want to be the truth to themselves, the world, and then use God and his scriptures to justify it. It's a no for me. It's a heck no for me. The fact that y'all are able to point out Satan and the enemy in your personal life when it comes time to place the blame of something going wrong in your life. Everybody know how to point out the devil. Everybody, every, the, everything that goes bad in your life is the devil. Every single thing. Everybody knows how to point out the devil. Everybody can point out a witch, a warlock. Everybody got discernment. Everybody know that when it comes time to place the blame game in your personal life. But when it comes to the agenda being pushed upon this world, Christians are now blind to it. Christians done purposely went and go put their discernment in the trash can and, 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 and put out pride, ego, and fear. And then knocked God up off the pedestal and placed politicians on that pedestal. So many Christians are missing the plot. Because y'all are making it about people when this is a spiritual battle. Like literally, ain't nobody calling them people the demonic democrats for no reason. Everything that they do is demonic. Everything. And you can look at the people, the places, but we are going off the agendas being pushed. It don't matter how many scriptures you want to flip, toss, and turn to make yourself feel better. Aborting a baby is not okay. Period. It don't matter how many scriptures you want to toss, turn... Taking the innocence of children is not okay because over 300,000 kids was lost and I'm pretty sure that none of them are no longer pure. Y'all are Christians are purposely missing the plot that children are under attack, your womb is under attack, and women are under attack. But somehow the devil was able to convince you that he cares about you because he's allowing you to kill your kids at a convenience. You don't even understand the attack you're under. Women are under. Y'all have not even begun to fight for a right yet. I don't understand how anybody is confused at the fact that T-Swift endorsed Kamala and the Demonic Democrats. We already came to the conclusion that that lady was a twitch. We already came to the conclusion that Beyonce is a twitch. We already came to the conclusion that Meg Thee Stallion's soul is no longer hers. Like, we've already came down to the conclusions that... The devil is within the demonic democrats. Don't subscribe to any of them if that's if that makes you feel better. But to purposely place sunglasses over your eyes so you do not see the demonic agenda that them people is pushing so you can feel better about yourself and conforming to this world and going against everything that is not of God is insanity to me. Because at the end of the day, you got to answer for that. Y'all are purposely missing the plot. And then using God and his scriptures to do so. Purposely trying to make yourself feel better and using God and his scriptures to do so. I'm going to lose followers, friends. I, I'm going to lose a lot of people with what I'm about to say. So if you're easily offended, if you're one of those people you, don't, you, you prefer fiction to fact, get out. For those of you that are still here, don't tell me that you are a Christian. If you're running around here preaching this, this unified Jesus, this, let me tell you something. Jesus is not everybody's friend. Jesus is not everybody's friend. This is how I know some of y'all have never picked up the Bible and read it for yourself. Somewhere I read, and I believe it was in the gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword for I have come to set at variance, meaning set at division, the mother against the daughter, the father, the, excuse me, the mother against the son, father against the daughter. He that loveth mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. He that picketh up not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And I'm going to tell you some, all you Democrats, all you democratic deviants that want to advocate for abortion and at late term abortion, all y'all that want to advocate for these anti-Christian policies, yet call yourself a Christian. You are some of the best and biggest hypocrites on the planet. You honor God with your lips, but deny him with the way you vote and deny him with your lives. Period. Point blank in the story. So the thing about it is this. You say you were Christian. But you run around here talking about all religions are a pathway to God. You say you believe in Jesus, you say, but Jesus is the only person that I've ever heard say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. And I got a question for all of y'all. Has Kamala Harris, how many times have you heard Kamala Harris mention God? How many times have you heard Kamala Harris mention Jesus? How many times, versus rather, how, how many times you heard Trump mention God? How many times you heard Trump say, well, I think there's someone up there watching out over me that wants me to get in here. And somebody said last night on his interview, said, I think he, well, I think he's voting for you. 
See, y'all don't want to have this real conversation because, see, uh, again, y'all don't really stand with Jesus. Y'all stand with Jesus when it's convenient. You stand with God when it's convenient, but God calls you to reject your own desires, reject your own thoughts, reject your own isms, your own thoughts and beliefs, and follow his. That's what he meant when he said pick up the cross and carry your cross. That's what he meant. But you have a lot of these politicians here that'll play on religion. They'll play on, they'll, they'll tickle your ears with certain sections of the word, but then they'll leave out other things. And again, if this, if this offends you, I really don't care. Jesus, Jesus is offensive. Jesus offends people that think they are good enough on their own. And let me tell you something. You can argue with me all you want. You can argue in the comments. If you tell me that the Democratic Party is a party of Christianity, you're lying. Am I saying that all Republicans are perfect? No, but that's the point of being a Christian. A Christian acknowledges, hey, there are parts about myself there is, there, that are absolutely flat out, without question, effed up and wrong. Period, point blank in the story. That's why deny yourself, follow Jesus. That's what a Christian is. A Christian says God's way is better than my way. What we have now, though, is this this salad bar Christianity, this 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 touch of Christianity with a touch of Buddhism, with a touch of this, with a touch of that, a sprinkle of this. No, it's no, I ain't going for it. I'm too old and I'm too I'm too tired of of of, of not wanting to step on people's toes. No, y'all need to know the way that you think about a lot of things is absolutely wrong. Period. Point blank. End of story. Now, I don't mean to offend nobody, but I'm going to tell it like it is. You don't you dare tell me you a Christian and you running around here voting for, for this Democrat that's advocating for what she advocating for. Again, am I saying Trump is perfect? Absolutely not. But Trump can acknowledge and we all can acknowledge Trump's wrongdoing. He can't hide it. He can't run from it. But I'd rather side with the person whose flaws I see versus the person who think and who try to move like they smell like cinnamon rolls. Period, point blank, end of story. Judy. The people that vote for Kamala Harris got to have brains the size of a mustard seed. I mean that shit with all due disrespect. Kamala, what are you going to do about the economy? Well, as you know, I was raised in the middle class and I work for McDonald's. We don't give a fuck that you work for McDonald's. Nobody cares. You working at McDonald's in the 70s has nothing to do with nothing. She never answered one question. And she have real life NPCs marching in the comments. Ah, ah. Plies, put your hands up when you see me. Steve Harvey, put your hands up when you see me. We have nothing to go off of. And you telling me to vote. Rick is smiling. Don't wear glasses when you see me. All y'all got to really see me. This shit is getting pathetic, bro. She give you nothing. You vote for nothing. So you get nothing. It's that motherfucker simple. This bitch can't answer one question. So Kamala's team wins the award for America's top here dance. Apparently they were tired of us asking for these policies to be made public so that we could actually read through them. Because as it appears, all they did was copy and paste Joe Biden's policies. And a user on Twitter literally was able to see because the metadata was the description for voting for Joe Biden. And in the internet world, when you go to search anything on the internet, you'll see a title for it, whether it be the web page or the name of an article or anything like that. Underneath that, you will find a description. That description is the metadata. And hers literally said, join our campaign to reelect Joe Biden. <laughs> this is like a new level of playing in everybody's faces, which is actually unfortunate because we are in September with an election in November. And if by now the Democratic Party doesn't recognize how imperative it is for them to reach people who are uncommitted, undecided, as a result of them voicing that they really need to see policies that are going to impact real change. And y'all can stop with the, well, if y'all don't vote for Kamala, then it's Trump. Because um, Jill Stein is still on ballot. Am I the only one that feel like talking to a Democrat is like talking to a Venezuelan or illegal criminal that's in our country right now. 
It's like no matter what you say or how you say it, they just don't get it. For example, I can say the American people are struggling. Credit card debt's at an all-time high. Inflation is at an all-time high. And their response will be, oh, you need to work harder. You need to get a better job. It ain't our fault you're struggling. Newsflash, I'm not talking about me personally. I have money, plenty of it. Over 40 accounts. I'm talking about us as a whole. Then all y'all say is Trump is racist. No, y'all are racist. Y'all are the only one that make racial comments and talk about race. No one else does that but y'all. Stop going by what that clown say and say how y'all really feel. Because ain't no way you're an American citizen and you feel like everything's okay and they did a great job. Y'all know damn well the last time y'all heard or seen Kamala is when she said, we did it, Joe. Fuck out my face. Regarding the presidential can mm -hmm. candidacy, who do you think would be more beneficial for the black community, Ms. Harris oh. or Mr. Trump? Now, this is my opinion. I'm about to get some people mad at me. But I think who would benefit black people more is most certainly, unequivocally, I say unashamedly, <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Nowhere in the same universe, Mr. Trump. It's not even a conversation. Actually, if we're talking about who's going to benefit the black community more, we shouldn't bring her name up. Mr. Trump, absolutely. I don't know Mr. Trump. I just imagine if I met him, okay? And then I imagine <laughs> if I met Ms. Harris. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to them on behalf of you. Okay, so we have real black excellence here hustling backward and you and what y'all want to do and the work you're doing in the community and what we have going on. And I'm speaking to them and I'm trying my best to get them to understand what the benefit is of what we're doing on black people specifically and as an extension, all people. When I think of that personally, me talking to these candidates, I don't get the sense that Ms. Harris would feel what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't get the sense that she's a leader of men. For sure. Of a nation. Sure. Not that not that she, it has nothing to do with her being a woman. Right. Because women can lead most surely. We don't, we don't have a problem with women in leadership or women speaking. It's not a matter of her being a woman. It's simply a matter of within her eye, personally, it's my opinion, I don't get the sense that she would even desire or have the knowledge or the leadership ability to say, let's make that go, let's fix that, let's mm -hmm, work that out. Mm -hmm. Give me the freaking time when he said that, because at the end of the day, all y'all do is put up a bunch of rhetoric online and don't know nothing. Of course, when I came for Trump and signed him, give me some of that sunlight real quick. Man, so we're not keeping from Trump, but we do have a lot of people spewing rhetoric that, oh, he's going to make us slaves. Trump's going to do all that stuff. he been in office. He would have did it. So, no, we're not going to let people use the boogeyman tactic and scare us with what Trump going to do. Because we know what the Democrats who are currently in office right now are not doing. 